Hello everyone, this is going to be a continuation of our discussion of the chemistry of hair. You can follow along with the images I have here by uh, referring to the shared uh, Google Doc. So just to review, hair is made of proteins and proteins are made of amino acids. They're called amino acids because they have an amino group and a carboxyl group which is an acid group. but uh, all the amino acids differ in their side chain. So there are 20 common amino acids found in proteins. We're going to eventually come back and focus in on this one, cysteine. Those different side chains, uh, this image shows you a little bit better. If you notice the upper portions of all of these molecules are the same. That's what makes them amino acids. It's these side chains that are highlighted that are different. And there's our friend cysteine again. Um, these all have different properties uh, that determine the eventual shape and function of the protein. the interactions between all those side chains end up making proteins fold into different shapes. Pay attention to here how these proteins are folding into spirals and then cozying up to each other. So this is just a long, these beads are amino acids. The side chains make the amino acids uh, chains spiral up with each other. So here's another way to think about that. Uh, this diagram is showing you these coils are the amino acid chain like we saw before. And you can see it's also in that same sort of spiral I was pointing out. And there are different interactions that hold these coils together. Uh, the first one, we see a dotted line between hydrogens and oxygens. You can guess what that's gonna be. These are hydrogen bonds that are linking uh, individual coils on this big long spiral. This plus and minus is showing you that there's an ionic bond like it's not really an anionic bond but it is a uh, charge attraction between adjacent protein chains. And the one we're going to focus on really today is a bond between two sulfurs in adjacent chains. But just as an example of how this works, we've already talked about this, but um, you have hydrogen bonds that are partially responsible for the shape of, of proteins. In this case, we're talking about hair proteins. Uh, if you are setting your hair, as in with like hot rollers or an iron, uh, once your hair is wet, the water will break the hydrogen bonds because it forms hydrogen bonds in between them you can roll or straighten your hair and apply heat that then removes the water and then new hydrogen bonds will be formed in a different spot which will uh, set the shape. But this is not permanent. If you want to make permanent changes to the structure of proteins you need to affect weak links in the hair proteins that are stronger. So between cysteines on different protein chains you can form strong disulfide bonds. These are permanent and are difficult to break. Things like the uh, charge attractions and hydrogen bonds are fairly easy to uh, change just with uh, wetting and drying hair. The strong permanent reactions are disulfide bonds and they happen between cysteines because cysteine contains this functional group called the sulfhydryl group or sometimes a thio group.
this picture is showing us two adjacent protein chains that have cysteines near them and the sulfurs on each of them can actually join up and this makes a permanent bond between these two chains. What sort of bond would that be? If you thought covalent, you were right. So these are covalent bonds which are difficult to break. Things like hydrogen bonds are weak static cling attractions and those are easy. That's why uh, just using water and heat to change the shape of hair temporarily works. So we're going to learn that changing the shape of hair using these disulfide bridges involves redox reactions. You can see here that the uh, this diagram is showing us that the reaction used to break these bonds is a reduction reaction and, the, and there's also an oxidation reaction that is used to reform the bonds. We're going to come back to this image in a moment. So let's think about why this would work. If you look up disulfide bonds in Wikipedia, you get this listing is how the bonds are broken and formed. Let's think about what this means. The R here means the rest of the protein. The SH is that sulfur hydrogen functional group on cysteine. So this is showing you two proteins that have two individual cysteines forming a bridge between them. So we have two R's with a sulfur and a hydrogen becoming two R's, one, two, with the sulfurs in between them joined up with a covalent bond. In this process, you lose the hydrogens and you lose two electrons. So since this process involves electrons being lost, then going in this direction from unjoined cysteines to joined cysteines is oxidation. Going in the other direction, when which you are um, uh, breaking the bonds, means that you're gaining electrons, so that makes this um, an, a re reduction reaction. So there's plenty of links here in the document to check out, by the way. Let's go back and take a look at the uh, picture again just to see what this is going to mean. Um, so we have sulfurs connecting hair proteins. You add some sort of chemical agent that will reduce these um, sulf disulfide bonds by adding electrons and hydrogen to them. Remember that I mentioned that one way that you can tell if something has been reduced, especially in biology, is if it's had hydrogen added to it. So you see hydrogen added to the sulfur. That tells you that these sulfurs have been reduced. And in doing so, you break the bond between the adjacent sulfurs. So you add a chemical to break the disulfide uh, bonds. They're sometimes called disulfide bridges. And then if you, this is a perm, you wrap the hair on curlers to change its shape. Or if it's a re relaxer, then you would uh, pull the hair straight in some fashion and let the reducing agent work long enough to break most of the bonds. Notice that some of the bonds are going to even if they do break, may not be in the right position now to reform. And some of them may not break, so I'm just going to draw that in here. Let's say that some of them may not completely break. Um, then you add another um, chemical onto it that will re-oxidize the bonds. And this means uh, in which this case means taking the hydrogens and electrons away from the sulfurs and this recreates the bonds in between them. But also note 
that not every single uh, sulfur and hydrogen is going to be lined up properly now so you're not going to be br making as many bonds and this is one of the reasons why uh, perming or re relaxing your hair weakens it you have extra bonds now that aren't can or extra sulfurs now that aren't connected to their um, ha uh, mate on the other protein chain so you've reduced the number of strong bonds that are holding the hair to together. All right, I encourage you to take a look at these links and read more about it. Um, I hope that you found this interesting and that you can uh, make a connection between redox reactions and this process. All right, uh, have fun and I will talk to you soon.